Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, on our website, or our social media. It's in the description below. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing. Today, we're discussing one of the best new watches of 2020, now just becoming available on the pre-owned market. This is the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Automatic Satin Steel 100 Meter, a watch that finishes what the Octo Finissimo Automatic started. It is now not just sporty, it is a true sports watch. It remains thin. Despite 100 meter water resistance, the timepiece is only 6.7 millimeters thick. From lug to lug, it measures 46.5 millimeters, and the nominal diameter of this relatively square-shaped watch is 40 millimeters. Let's throw it on my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch is all steel, which means you do feel the weight of it more than the toy-like titanium original, and for a lot of folks, that's just fine. A luxury watch shouldn't feel too light and too toy-like. The watch is nevertheless super slim, razor slim for a 100 meter watch. Still thin by the standard of any automatic, it is an impressive piece of finishing and engineering. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference because it is so short from lug to lug and so thin. Let me give you the standard shots. There's the cuff shot, there's the over the top, and then there's the down the barrel with the margin on each side. Now, taking a quick look at the bracelet, you can see that it pulls straight down. This is something you won't find on, for example, the Nautilus or the Royal Oak. Those bracelets like to flare out. The fact that this one pulls straight down means it's suitable for smaller wrists. Taking a quick look at the bracelet, Bulgari did the right thing and created a little bit of contrast. A combination of satin and polish, and you can see it's polished on its flanks. The primary links are satin finished on the top, and there's also a little bit of depth to the bracelet. As you can see, the intermediate links create a slanting profile that adds little pockets of volume on what would otherwise be a broad, flat expanse of steel. You can also see that the timepiece is remarkably well made with thoughtful additions like recesses inside the links that flank the clasp so that the swing arms can be recessed fully into the links themselves, maintaining the thin profile of the bracelet. So it doesn't get thick just because the clasp comes into play. The clasp sits inside a recess in the bracelet itself. It's a double folding friction fit snap clasp, and as you can see, it says Bulgari on the underside. Uh, there's also a system of pins that are used for sizing, so you're going to need a punch and a block if you want to size this at home. Rolling over to the case, you can see that it's simple, and in some regards, the contrast and finish makes this a more attractive watch than the standard titanium model. The combination of the satin and the polish really breaks up the volumes and better accentuates the facets, of which Bulgari claims an improbable number over 100. I don't know if that's true, but there's certainly a good deal of nuance to this case, and now thanks to the satin and the polish, far more contrast than before. You may be wondering, how did they achieve 100 meters water resistance? And one of the ways they did is with a screw down crown. The crown is all of high polish with double road knurling that makes it easy to grip. And then there's a ceramic cabochon facing outboard. You can see there's a little bit of a tension between circular forms here and angular forms as there's a rounded off polygon that acts as the plinth for the circular bezel itself. Then you can see there's an inner bezel that has the same rounded polygonal shape, and it sits underneath a round sapphire. The timepiece does feature an interesting radial lapping machine created grain that emerges from an imaginary center point and origin at the center of the dial. That lapping machine radial sunburst is something you expect from 70s watches. And since one could easily argue that the design inspiration of this watch is rooted alternately in the early 2000s and the mid 70s, it does seem fit. Now let's talk about the dial. Befitting a watch that is ultra slim, it's minimal, but we do have applique metallic indices and numerals, so it's not completely flat, and the contrast is excellent. Sometimes polished hands and indices on a black dial tend to blend in. That's not the case here. Rolling the watch over, you can see the well-loved BVL 138. It's the same movement from the automatic, and you can see as with that watch, it's no expense spared. Now, you get 100 meters of water resistance here, but it's the same basic movement. Automatic winding, thanks to a platinum, not gold, not tungsten, platinum micro rotor. It has 55 to 60 hours of power reserve. It pivots on 36 joules. It is an ultra-thin movement, 2.23 millimeters thick, and it's over 36 millimeters in diameter, so Bulgari is a full manufacturer. They make cases, dials, bracelets, and yes, movements, every part of the watch, and the movement is made in the Valley du Jeu in 
the high horology atelier that used to be Daniel Rote and Gerald Genta experts of the ultra thin and you can see a full balance bridge both to brace the balance against check and also to stiffen up the movement as a whole because it is so broad and so thin it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour and there's a combination of machine and hand finishing here that's rather reminiscent of Audemars Piguet with the sole exception that the bevels in particular seem broader rounder and more mirrored than you'll get on the mass-produced AP calibers which tend to have straight cut machine finished edges this is quite impressive there's engine turning on the base plate. All of the screw heads are black polished, and the Cote de Genève is quite convincing. I'll do my best to show what I'm talking about, but the Cote de Genève is darker on one side. If only it is a bracelet, after all. It's darker on one side and lighter than the other, suggesting it was laid down by abrasive wheel, not stamped. This might be the best sports watch of 2020. Email tmasa at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.